Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. All right, Derek, we've been looking at what God expects of us. Right. We began with the idea of, well, you've got to open up your heart to the Word. There's no doubt about that. Oh, exactly. And once you've opened up your heart to the Word, then you've got to really develop a faith in God, a faith that's more than just, well, intellectually, I know He's there. Right. It's an active faith. Everybody that had it was active in scripture. And then uh, we looked at the idea of repentance, the importance of, of turning, changing the direction you're going, go a different direction. But of course, the Lord didn't really stop there. He did not, no. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, he said, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. It's kind of a simple statement, but it's pretty powerful. Can you think of, of anybody that illustrates this idea of confessing? Well, I think one of the first ones you uh, probably want to look at is Peter. You know, Peter's a, a person that he always likes to speak. Uh, he always <laughs> likes to open his mouth, okay? Yeah. Now, sometimes that gets Peter in trouble, but sometimes it really it really helps you understand who Peter really is and, and, and what, he really, uh, what he really means uh, and what's important to him. So Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 13, Jesus is going to come uh, with, with disciples uh, to Caesarea Philippi. Uh, and he asked his disciples, he said, uh, who do men say uh, the, the Son of Man is? Or who do you, and they said, some say John the Baptist and others Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to him, but who do you say? That I am now. I can't imagine being Peter here in this moment, or any of the disciples, even you know, here in this moment, because you know, here they are, and they've listened to what all the world has to say, who all that they yeah. say Jesus is. Right. But Peter, he's going to give a, a reply, and it's so simple, but yet so beautiful. So Simon Peter replied, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." And so wow. you see here that that Peter he was recognizing not only who Jesus was as being you know the Son of God. But he's the Christ, and that's just so very important because he recognizes, you know, who Jesus is and what he is here for. Uh, now, Peter doesn't always have that kind of confidence, but here in this moment, what he said was that he knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God, and that's that's an important confession for us to, uh, to make. It is. It uh, is. Can you think of any? place else that might give us a good example of this kind of you know, confession? With, yeah, with you talking about Peter and what he said, uh, I, I can't help but think about Thomas and bless his heart. <laughs> Everybody calls him Doubting Thomas, and he did doubt, but but if you study it closely, so did everybody else. Right. He's, he's not alone. No. But, but in John 20, the Lord has been raised from the dead, and he actually is with everybody except, except Thomas right and they start telling him we've seen the Lord and and probably they told him because we know what he told them to do he probably said man we touched the holes in his hand and we touched the the, the spear print in his side yep. and so you know Thomas says you know what I'm not gonna believe unless I get to do that something like that well the Lord comes again uh, to the group and it's it's on Sunday again and here's what transpires uh, beginning in verse uh, 26 of John chapter 20. Uh, when Jesus stood in the midst of them, that's at the end of that verse, he said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but be believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. That's a powerful confession. But you know, it doesn't really stop there. It doesn't. The Lord then says, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So I think that's a message for us. I've never seen Jesus in the flesh. Right. I never touched the nail prints in his hand. I never touched the spear print in his side. But because of the witnesses, I believe in him and I confess him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, you're going to be blessed for that. Absolutely. And so I hope we all can see that 
we need to confess Christ. We need to confess him daily by the ways that we, uh, way that we live our life and definitely by the, the words of our mouth so that we can, people can know that we belong to him. That's right.